What you're hearing is not some kind of alien radio transmission from Mars. It's actually the sound from this fluorescent drop light I have, depending on where you have it placed. In relation to the ferrite rod antenna, it makes some pretty interesting noises. Well, hello there, everyone. It's Stereophonic Stuff here, and I've got another, another trip down memory lane at a forgotten relic, and that is collector's edition reproduction radios. There was a big market for these back some 20 years ago. People wanted to have reproduction radios that reminded them, I guess, of the past. And uh, this was one of those things. This was manufactured by the Thomas Corporation, which dabbled in making reproduction tombstone and cathedral-style radios, akin to those from the 30s, 40s, and early 50s. This one, having the date 1934 engraved, or at least pressed into this plastic trim piece. This is model number 411A by Thomas, and I guess they were so cheap they didn't want to actually put like a metal placard for the serial number, so they just stuck a very cheap looking sticker on here. There's a date code on the back of here, very faintly it says 90 and then 03. I'm going to hazard a guess and say this was made in March of 1990. It definitely has that look to it, that sticker right away, kind of gives it away. That definitely looks to be around that time period, but I could very well be wrong. And if I am, I would appreciate a gentle correction in the comments section below. But it's very cheap, a particle board back. This is not your grandfather's radio. This, this is, this is a, a, a pretty poor attempt at trying to recreate the tombstone and cathedral table radios of yesteryear. But at least they decided to keep and not deviate away too much when it came to the actual tuning dial. It looks pretty true to what it looked what it, from the radios I've seen from that time period. There's actually, a, I believe, a two-inch speaker in here, mid-range speaker. But that's it. I would think that, you know, in this day and age, or at least in that day and age of 1990, right after the heyday of hi-fi audio components in the 80s, that they would at least put maybe a tweeter or even a woofer in here all they have is a mid-range driver in here and it sounds a, just just absolutely pitiful I have Sony Walkmans with built-in speakers and I have portable radios and cassette players with built-in speakers that blow this thing away in terms of audio fidelity and you have these wooden trim pieces here which are loose, they're coming loose, they didn't do very well to actually keep them secure they put what looks to be two little dots of glue to hold this up down and if I try to wiggle this I could just pull this thing right off if I wanted to. And you do have this wood finish here, which uh, is incredibly flimsy and cheap, but I don't blame them. They're not going to be using actual, you know, hardwood flooring for this thing. And there's the answer to our question about why this is such a poor quality radio made in China. That explains it all. It has a quality control sticker down here and some chicken scratch. I don't even understand what that says, but. Anyone want to hazard a guess on what that's supposed to say? I don't know, let's say somebody tried initialing it and their pen ran out of ink. And then up here for their little logo thing, they have this piece of plastic that they also just put and stuck some kind of glue on this piece of wood that sticks out. Okay, I got all the screws out of here, and of course this being particle board, it made a mess of my table here. So excuse the wood chips. And now we're going to open this thing up for the first time in who knows how long. Get a load of the cheapness. That's an 8 ohm, 3 watt speaker. If someone were to drop this, it would probably stand no chance and blow apart into a million pieces. That's, a, that's besides the point. There is the ferrite rod antenna, and I don't even know why they decided to do this. They took the FM antenna and just looped it around the power cord, which for all intents and purposes does a decent job. But all of the other models of Thomas reproduction radios that I've seen in the past has the FM antenna actually come out of a separate little hole and so you can play with the positioning because many times the uh, power cords positioning isn't ideal for FM radio reception. But they've got that at least screwed into here whereas the other one didn't. So the power cord, if somebody yanked it, would rip off the whole back cover and possibly the power transformer. And here is the incredibly cheap, flimsy and of course Chinese cassette player mechanism again I wouldn't trust any too many cassette tapes in this thing it, it warbles and 
has speed and pitch changes all the time. And good luck if you had to replace the bulbs in that dial assembly because you'd probably have to take the entire circuit board and this plastic case that it's resting in, you'd have to remove all of that just to gain access to the bulbs that are all the way in there. The majority of this radio though is unused and uh, there is the minuscule power transformer again because all you're doing is powering a basic 3 watt speaker which doesn't look to have a rotted surround but it still sounds terrible regardless of whether or not the foam surround is rotted. We have more mystery numbers on this back panel and some yellow paint or something like that. Model 411A, do not open, radio receiver, this can't even tune into the extended AM band. It can only go up to 1650 kilohertz. So now that we've gone ahead and taken a look at this thing, let's take a look at where it fails the most, and that's audio quality. <laughs> $10,000 Thursdays. I'm going to play my favorite song. Very scratchy and control. Enhanced by patient from it for your call. Card may take a paint. Nice. Back to plan. Brass you. Okay, enough of that. As you can hear, there is absolutely no high-end or low-end frequencies to speak of with this thing. It's just all mid-range. Sounds terrible. Absolutely terrible. And the reception isn't that great as well. Nearly all of the stations I could pick up on every other receiver I happen to have, even with no external antenna, can't be picked up with this unit for some reason. Again, probably because of its poor FM antenna. Let's go ahead and give it a demonstration on AM, and for that I'll have to shut this light off. Oh, yeah. What's going to get things done is on the pavement, in the street, what I've had to do, grassroots, door-to-door, -door, all that sort of stuff. Now, AM actually sounds pretty good on here, again, because it's just a mid-range speaker. So, it actually doesn't sound too bad because you don't get all that whistling that's associated with AM, especially if you have a wideband receiver and you happen to have noisy surroundings from power transformers and adapters and anything like that. Picking up a phone and calling a talk. So we knew that. My fortunes in phone and CD kit that will show you how easy it is to get in, get out, and get there are There's a geopolitical issue too, which is the United States government, the British government, have not, in fact, been willing to, to insist that this is what happened. The officer said, This is my flesh, this is my blood. And we profess the reason. They're just playing Sounds American like music on like here. I guess they decided to go back to news. Now that's pretty neat. This can actually tune into Noah's weather radio station, which is located somewhere around 1600 kilohertz. California, 9 to 3 to 5 feet. Friday, winds diminishing to east to northeast 5 to 15 knots, then back to 20 to 30 knots. <laughs> Just to demonstrate this, uh, this unit's very poor cassette player, I have this uh, single from 1998. It's Jennifer Page's Crush. I'm not going to play side A. The tape happens to re be rewound to side two. But it's kind of, if I can get this open with one hand, that would be very, very good. So here is the cassette tape. Now, you actually have to load this with the side you want to play facing backwards. So in this case, 
I want to play the dance mix on side B and the way to do that is you put it in so that side A faces you. I don't think that's supposed to happen. If I hold it with my hand, it goes away. And sometimes it'll, no, sometimes it'll stay like that. Let's turn this thing around. This needs a minor adjustment, but it's not even worth it. The cassette player is so poor in this thing. You fast forward by pressing and engaging it like this. Ironically, that's when it finally stops wiggling around and rattling and then to eject you press this button so, so if I push this in I might be able to trick this into thinking there's a cassette tape loaded in it I'm not sure if you could pick up on that, but there is not supposed to be that much warble and speed and pitch changes in this song. It was not recorded that way. And it's not a problem of the cassette tape, it's a stupid player. Again, another demonstration of the absolutely wonderful build quality of this unit. Slapped together and held together with nothing more than MDF particle board and some hot glue. Really a perfect representation of the quality of the radios of the 1930s and 1940s, right? Not. And look at this. This is coming off as well. I guess they uh, had to save a few cents on, in glue. A bit of Gaelic fair. Beginning with the... Double. Some weird interference this is picking up. A founding member of the Royal College of Music and built his fame and fortune in Cambridge, Sir Charles Villiard Stanton. Confused alone. Winning. I hate to say it, but listening to any sort of musical programming on this thing actually gives me a headache. I don't know about anyone else, but if it's going to be that lo-fi, I don't know, I won't even bother listening. It just gives me a headache. So that'll conclude this little demonstration of a very poor attempt at a reproduction tombstone radio from the 40s made by Thomas. I just got to go ahead and screw this thing back together and get rid of all these stupid wood chips that left everywhere on my desk. If you happen to have a comment, feel free to leave one. If not, well, that's just as fine.